This video shows how to remove and replace the VST SRM front end kit. Here are some things to be aware of before you begin servicing a VST nozzle. To perform vapor collection replacement and nozzle spout replacement, you must be in ASC level A, B, C, or D. According to the executive order, you do not have to be a certified ASC to install a new VST EVR nozzle. However, local air districts may impose other requirements. Always check with local air districts for their requirements. The shipping carton of a front-end repair kit contains complete instructions for installing each of the components. It is document IOM7. For now, let's walk through the steps. Be safe. Remember, you're dealing with a potentially highly explosive, highly flammable liquid and equipment that can take your life. You must constantly be aware of the need for a high degree of concern for not only the public safety, but your personal safety as well. Don't take any chances or shortcuts. Be sure to check with the local authorities about their safety requirements for the area in which you'll be working. Here are the top safety precautions. One, appropriately barricade the work area to block vehicle access. Two, for the dispenser, power it off, lock and tag it out, Close the product shear valve. 3. Drain the liquid into an approved container. 4. Remove old hanging hardware before assembling the new components. Always adhere to the appropriate lockout tagout procedures. Here you see the components of the VST nozzle repair kits. The VST FEK100 includes both the vapor collection kit and the nozzle spout assembly kit. The VST VCK100 includes the vapor collection kit only. If there has been spout damage to a nozzle from a drive off or customer abuse, VST recommends replacing the entire front end kit with a VST FEK100. This is a cost effective way to maintain and extend the useful life of the nozzle. Here are the tools and supplies you'll need 1. A torque wrench. 2. A VST SRT200, which is a spout nut torque wrench attachment. Three, a pair of band clamp pincers. Four, petroleum jelly. And five, Loctite 271. Before you begin replacing the front end kit on a VST EVR nozzle, you need to make sure you've matched the correct front end components to the correct nozzle. Remember, the SRM nozzle has a black label on it, and the G2 nozzle has a blue label on it. Take a moment to verify which nozzle you'll be repairing to avoid installing a mismatched front end kit. Let's begin with the vapor collection kit assembly removal. Remove the large band clamp from the vapor collection assembly with the nozzle band clamp pincers. Pull the vapor collection assembly, also referred to as the boot, off of the clamping groove of the nozzle body. Pull the vapor collection assembly off of the spout by slightly twisting it to go over the spout latch ring. Now you're ready to install the new vapor collection kit. Start by placing the large band clamp on the collection sleeve. Check the proper orientation of the interlock rod. Slide the vapor collection kit, also known as VCK, over the spout. Make sure there's no interference between the interlock rod and the spout nut. Align and insert the interlock rod into the interlock port. Engage the interlock a few times to check for correct alignment and functionality. 
Align and center all the alignment marks on top of the vapor collection kit and the nozzle scuff. Using the nozzle band clamp pincers, tighten the collection band clamp until the collection sleeve will not rotate. Let's move now to how to remove an existing nozzle spout assembly. Loosen the spout nut with a smooth jaw wrench. Do not use a pipe wrench or locking type pliers to prevent causing damage to the nozzle. Once all the threads are disengaged, pull the spout straight out. Now you're ready to install the new one. The fuel chamber should remain in the nozzle casting with the vacuum sensing tube hole to the top. If the fuel chamber is pulled out of the nozzle casting, check the O-rings for damage. Replace the O-rings if they are damaged. Lubricate the O-rings prior to reassembly. Insert the fuel chamber into the nozzle casting. The poppet stem with the spring goes through the poppet hole in the fuel chamber, the center hole. Push the fuel chamber until it is flush with the casting. The vacuum sensing tube hole in the fuel chamber should be oriented at the top. Now let's look at how to replace the nozzle spout assembly. Lightly lubricate all the O-rings on the spout assembly. Do not block the vacuum sensing tube hole with lubricant. Align the vacuum sensing tube with the mating hole in the fuel chamber. Align the anti-rotation bump on the spout with a casting notch. Be careful not to damage the spout O-rings. Firmly insert the spout assembly into the nozzle casting. Apply a dab of Loctite 271 or equivalent thread sealant to the male thread of the nozzle casting. Be careful not to apply the Loctite so that it would enter into the casting notch. Thread the spout nut onto the nozzle casting and tighten firmly. Torque the spout nut to 34 foot-pounds. The spout should be tight and not able to rotate. Be careful, do not over-tighten the spout nut. Then install the vapor collection kit. Anytime you replace or repair a component, you must perform these three tests to make sure the component is functioning correctly. One, a leak test. Two, a nozzle shutoff test. And three, a resistance test.
You've reached the end of this video.